The STSPE CBD or Plasma Enhanced Chemical Vapor Deposition System is used to initiate a controlled reaction between gases in a radio frequency induced plasma in order to deposit materials such as silicon dioxide and silicon nitride. The STS system is capable of operating with both a low frequency and a high frequency power supply and is outfitted with a single chamber in which all depositions take place. It is also equipped with a load lock mechanism which is used for transporting samples into the chamber. The system is designed to control the stress of deposited films by adjusting the ratio of the high frequency power supply time to the low frequency power supply. Let's now get familiar with various parts of the STSPE CVD. The load lock chamber is where samples are loaded into the system. The system's computer monitor allows you to load and unload your samples, select the appropriate recipe, and adjust the parameters of the recipe. The chamber viewport allows you to view the activation of the plasma during deposition. The STSPE CVD is capable of processing a wide range of sample sizes. The numbers of samples that can be processed per run depends on the size of the samples. The system can accommodate wafer sizes ranging from 3 to 8 inches, but most depositions are typically performed on 4 inch substrates. If a sample happens to be something other than a wafer, there is a wafer shaped holding plate on which it can be placed. Typical deposition rates on the STS system range from 100 angstroms per minute to 400 angstroms per minute depending on the levels of power, pressure, and gas flow. It has the capability to deposit silicon dioxide at rates exceeding 500 angstroms per minute. However, the quality of the deposition may be sacrificed with the increased rate. This simply allows for a thick sacrificial layer of silicon dioxide to be deposited more quickly. Here at the MIRC, the STS PECBD is primarily used for depositing silicon nitride, silicon dioxide, and silicon oxynitride. The list of gases available for processing includes nitrogen, silane in a 2% nitrogen mixture, nitrous oxide, and ammonia. The gases available for cleaning the chamber are tetrafluoromethane and oxygen. Let's now introduce our lab users. <laughs> Before you can begin using the STSP ECVD, you must first log into the system at the access controller. Once you have done this, you can begin loading your sample. To begin, you must press the F3 button in order to select the load unload screen. Then press the V button in order to vent the load lock. The system will cycle through the vent process four times, which will take a few minutes. You will know that the system has reached atmosphere when the load lock pressure reads 716 torr. You should note that the STS PECVD will begin to pump the load lock back down if the chamber lid is not open within 45 seconds. If the load lock chamber is pressurized, do not attempt to open the lid. Doing so could damage the load lock handle. Open the load lock chamber lid and place your sample on the tray with the flat edge lined up with the open area on the substrate holder. You should make sure that your sample is securely positioned so that it does not shift during processing. Make sure you use the sample holding plate if you are processing something other than a wafer. Your samples will not be transferred into the chamber if the plate is not used. Once your sample is in place, you should close the load lock lid. Then press the L button to load the sample. The load lock will pump down and your sample will be loaded into the process chamber. Once your sample is in the chamber, press the F3 button to return to the main operating system. At any point during the process, you may press the F7 button, which will allow you to view a diagram of the gas lines, valves, and roots blower, among other aspects as well. This diagram provides a good example of how the system is functioning while a process is being run. You may also press the F8 button, which will display the aforementioned information in text form.
Never press the F4 button. This will shut the entire system down and possibly cause your sample to become stuck in the chamber, which could eventually lead to it breaking inside the system. If you happen to press the F4 button, an MRC staff member should be contacted immediately. Once your sample is loaded, the process must be initialized. To run a new process, you must press the F2 button. Select the recipe you wish to run from the list provided. During the initialization, any gas lines that are used during the process are purged and evacuated. The system will also bring the process temperature as well as the auxiliary temperature into compliance. Once the system has finished initializing, the process you have selected can be started. Press the F1 key to begin the processing. The first phase of the process is gas stabilization. The process gases are dispersed at the set point rates. The process pressure is attained through throttled pumping. The pressure and flow rates are maintained for 30 seconds such that the chamber can reach equilibrium. The next phase is deposition. Here the power is applied to the electrodes and plasma is created. There are two numbers that should be monitored during deposition. They are the reflected power and chamber bias voltage. The tuning network will automatically adjust the load and capacitor positions to reduce any reflected power. This number should be close to zero. Chamber bias voltage affects film quality as well as the deposition rate. This number should remain near constant with the same recipe throughout the process. If the number varies, this indicates a change in the chamber condition. If this is the case, the MRC staff should be notified. Once the process is complete, you may remove your sample. Press the F3 button to access the load unload feature. Then press U to unload the sample. You will know that the load lock is vented when the chamber pressure reaches approximately 716 torr. At this point, the load lock may be opened and your sample can be removed. When you're finished using the STSP ECVD, close the load lock and run a cleaning process. To run a cleaning process, press the F2 button and select the clean dot set recipe. When it is complete, you may log out of the system at the access controller. You should now have a pretty good understanding of how to load a sample, run a process, and initiate a cleaning process. If you have any questions, please contact an MRC staff member. Please do not ask Charlie.